Hi there, today I want to talk to you about water and toxicity and why I've started drinking distilled water. Now you may not have seen a video I did quite a while back in December it was last year and that talked a lot about water so what I'm going to do is I will play that at the end of this video and it gives you an idea about hydration. We're mainly composed of water, it is the most important thing in us I believe and it's the very essence of life um, and I talk about all sorts of other interesting things in there as well but when we want to talk about toxicity and the reason for talking about that is is that one of the ways you get sick is by taking toxins in and also the inability to get toxins out of your body and hydration will help with that but the quality of the water that you drink is vitally vitally important and one of the biggest problems we face today certainly in the Western world and in many parts of the world is that the water is simply toxic and even when you think you're drinking clean fresh water the question really is are you? So where we live I thought the water was pretty good and we for years I've drunk filtered water so we run it through a filtration system nothing fancy just a Brita filter and I thought that was adequate thinking the water was fine uh, I drink a lot of bottled water or I did and I kept reading about distilled water. Now, one of the reasons I was looking into it was to get rid of fluoride, to get rid of chlorine, lead, arsenic, uh, other heavy metals, um, estrogen, which is in the water, urine, because they aggressively recycle and clean the water, especially in the cities. So that's another problem. Whatever aggressive chemical cleaning they've done to it would still, I presume, have the chemicals in the water. I've not done a chemical analysis on it, but I decided in the end to buy a water distiller and I'm going to show you what happened when we did. So the very first thing I did was I did some digging around and one of our subscribers kindly pointed me towards one. Now, not all water distillers are the same. Uh, they certainly look similar. Um, this one is particularly powerful and does four liters of water in about three, three and a half hours, maybe just a bit less. Uh, some of the other ones seem to take up to five hours to do that. And if you were a large family, I suspect you'd probably want to get something on a more industrial scale or a couple of them um, because there's two of us in the house and we certainly get through probably about six or seven litres a day between us. Um, you may not, but that's certainly what we do. So it's really, really simple. It's it's kind of mimics the hydrological process in nature in as much as water evaporates, goes into the atmosphere, cools, clouds form, rain drops down. So that's a distillation process. So it does the same thing. It heats the water, it boils it, it runs it through a cooling tube and then the water drips out. So it's basically um, steam that you are, you, you are drinking. Um, what's really interesting was just have a look at the bottom of the container here. Now, this is water I'd run through a Brita filter uh, before I actually did this. And look at that stuff and the smell, I, I can't describe it. It's a weird kind of chemically smell. It's very unpleasant, I don't like it. And then what I decided to do, because you have to clean the thing, is I thought if I turn it off just before it's full, so I worked out how long it took to do four liters and I turned it off about 15, 20 minutes before. And look at the color of the liquid coming out of this. Now here's the thing, whatever the contaminants are that are in that, that's what I have been drinking every day for years. So that means my liver and my kidneys have had to been dealing with that. And you might just want to have a think about that because I was like, oh, that is vile. I can't believe I've been drinking that. Now, there's a couple of interesting things I've noticed since I've been drinking it. Number one is I'm drinking more water than before and I'm not peeing as much. So that suggests to me that it's coming more through the sweat. My body's using it more effectively. I'll tell you a couple of other really interesting things I've noticed, which is just as an aside, the water stays warm for a much longer than normal tap water and the kettle boils a lot quicker. And it's not just because the kettle's clean, um, because we live in a soft water area anyway, so we've never had trouble with that, but it certainly boils a lot faster. And I've noticed myself that I'm more tolerant of the cold and more tolerant of the heat. And that may be something to do with the distilled water or not. I suspect something because it is pure water. So that's really it for this video. I just wanted to encourage you to look at getting a distiller. Uh, and I'd encourage you just to have a look at it and have a think about that. Because I think that getting fresh water, really good, the highest quality pure water that you can get, will have tremendous health benefits because it will help strip toxins that may otherwise have been trapped in your body and you are not constantly ingesting toxins either. 
So with that in mind, you guys are absolutely amazing. I hope you enjoy the next video. Maybe smile watching it because, um, well, you'll see. It was me uh, when I first started doing videos. So I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Adrian. If you're new, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In this video, I'm going to be talking about water and hydration. Now, I think for most of us, it's a pretty boring subject. We grab a, a drink, uh, a glass of something, a cup of coffee, whatever, and we crack on with our day and we think we're hydrated. But it actually goes a lot deeper than that. And I think it's important to have an understanding of what water is, how it works in your system, what it's used for. Not, not a very deep view, just a, a deeper view than most people get. So we're going to dive into that in the video and explore that. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to give you some links to some really interesting fascinating videos that completely changed my view on water uh, and what it's all about it, it really is interesting stuff how much of us are water now when babies are born they're born wet from a wet environment and the numbers vary on this i've read all sorts of different numbers but babies seem to be about 75 to 80 percent water this gradually reduces as you move towards adulthood and from what I've read, adult males are around 50, sorry, 65% water, total composition across their entire body. Females, a little bit less at around, I think, 55 to 60%. And of different parts of your body have different water content. Even your bones, which I would have thought would be one of the most dry places, still contain something like 30% from what I've read. Um, liver, lungs, brain, and kidneys they're considerably higher and, and sort of high 80%. But again, as I said, the numbers vary. It's hard to get a lockdown on the actual number. Uh, and even your blood, uh, actually it's lower than that, but the plasma content of your blood is 90 plus percent. And water is the stuff of life. Every living thing on the planet, certainly in the plant and animal kingdoms, has a lot of water in it. So without water, you die. And in fact, the rule of three is really interesting. You can go three minutes or so without air, three days or so without water, and three weeks or so without food, without having too many catastrophic implications on your system. Um, you're an alkaline system. Now that means that you've got to have a pH of above seven. I think 7.5, it's probably slightly higher than that, is the most effective for the human body. Unfortunately, we're exposed to many, many things that make us acidic and that causes lots of health problems. So you want to keep your pH as high as you will, certainly around 7.5 or higher. Water plays an enormous role in that. In simple terms, this bioelectrical uh, machinery that we, we experience life through, it, it takes in um, air, water and food and sunlight. Um, and converts that into energy. So you get heat energy um, and other kind of energies around your body and then it produces waste products. Now those waste products have to be removed from the body. Now what's really interesting is if you want to clean something up outside here in the world you tend to use water or another solvent, particularly water. It's one of the most amazing substances known to man. It's the softest substance known to man and yet it can where you know in rivers and stuff they wear massive gorges you know look at videos of cheddar gorge or the grand canyon and water did all that basically with the food the the elimination we talked about you take food in and at some point in the near future the waste products are then removed from your system but have you ever thought about what happens to the remainder of the processes so you've got all these cellular processes going on in your body and there are waste products from that. How does that stuff get out? Now, you're gonna lose some waste products through your sweat. The skin is the biggest organ, if you will, on the body. Um, you're gonna lose some waste products, waste gas products through breathing. So when you exhale, you're breathing out moist, wet air. And again, sweat's water. The, the air you breathe out has water in it. Go and breathe on a mirror or a cold window and it fogs straight away. The other way is that it has to take and break down the waste products in your body. They have to be then transported around your body uh, through the lymph and the blood plasma to your kidneys and then it is excreted. So even things like tumors that your body breaks down, other waste products, because your body's replenishing itself constantly from the inside out all the time. So those waste products have to come out of your system. Now I want you to just Hold in your mind um, a picture, if you will, of dirty, stagnant water, which, which is horrible. If you want to get rid of these waste products efficiently, you want to be well hydrated. 
the whole system, I believe, just from a, me a mechanistic viewpoint, would be so much more efficient with more water in it. And yet most of us drink far too little in terms of water. Yeah, we drink lots of fluids, but not enough water. And I think we should learn from the beasts of the planet as well. You know, they only drink water and the plants only take in water as well. They don't take anything else in. You know, I mean, yeah, if you give a dog pretty much anything, it'll drink anything. But normally they just go for water and we can learn from that. Um, also, another thing is they actually drink separately to eating, unlike what we tend to do, which is have a glass of something there and you're eating away and you're drinking away. They do it differently. I'm going to come on to that in a few minutes. Um, and as a side note, they're also very particular about even the water they drink. I know our cats prefer much fresher water. Uh, my daughter's cat generally drinks from a fountain. It won't drink the still water at all. So they are particular about that. If you want to feel better quickly, so if you have a headache, you want to feel better, aside from the magnesium we've already talked about, drink a load of water. And just drink water. I want you to start thinking more in terms of the water content that you drink rather than the fluid content. So if you drink things like tea and especially coffee, they are diuretics. Now what that means in simple terms is they force water out of your system. So they flush water out. So you're thinking you're taking liquid in, they're pushing liquid back out. Alcohol does the same thing. Now I'm not down on any of them. I choose not to involve them in my life anymore. But pay attention to that. Drink lots more water. And if you want to really help yourself, uh, like when you're eating, have a glass of water five to ten minutes or two glasses before you eat. Let that go down and then eat. And then don't drink anything else for two to three hours afterwards, which will stop you diluting the digestive juices, if you will, uh, and the digestive process. So that will become more efficient. In fact, if you really want to supercharge your day, when you first get up in the morning, go and drink one or two big glasses of water. And if you really want to help that, put a little bit of either apple cider vinegar in the water or bicarb of soda. Uh, but don't put them both in at the same time because that, well, in fact, you could do. Um, that'll have an interesting reaction with an acid and alkaline together. It's, uh, it's quite an interesting little volcano. Think about that. Think about when you're drinking um, bottled and canned drinks as well. What have they actually got in them? Read the labels. Um, I, I tend not to drink anything like that anymore. It's just water and I drink green tea uh, and sometimes white tea, uh, but often just apple cider vinegar and stuff like that, obviously with water. I told someone about that a while back and they said they were really struggling and they were actually taking a large teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and just taking it neat, which was, brother, I take my hat off to you. I've got no idea how you managed to do that because no, I couldn't do it. Anyway, um, so yeah, th think about what you're actually, what you're drinking, read the labels and get rid of all the chemicals and man-made products. It really, I, I watch all the youngsters running around, not all, but many of them running around with canned drinks. They seem to walk around with a phone in one hand and a drink bottle or a drink can in the other hand. They're putting all sorts of noxious chemicals and toxins into the system, many of which are addictive, many of which I suspect long-term are gonna do incredible damage to their system. So just become more aware of that. The more fresh, clean water you can drink, the better you are going to feel. It, honestly, it makes an amazing, amazing difference. And that start your day with a couple of big glasses, drinking a glass before you eat makes an enormous difference. I would suggest typically if you're an adult, you wanna be drinking about a minimum of two liters of water a day. Um, on hot days where you're sweating more, you want to drink more. Um, if you're exercising, you want to drink more. If you're ill, you want to drink more to help flush the toxins out of your system. If you're detoxing, drink more to flush those toxins out. And I've read all sorts of different methods about how you know when you're dehydrated. And people say, oh, well, I drink when I'm thirsty. Well, maybe that's right and maybe it's not. To me, I think if you're drinking when you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated because that notification seems to come further down the track. So what I do is really simple. When I go for a pee, I look at the color of the pee and if it's clear to very pale yellow, sweet, we're in the right area. If I'm not peeing much, we've got a problem. It means I'm dehydrated. And if the pee is anything darker than pale yellow to clear, it means I'm dehydrated. So I wanna drink some more water. And, and that really is it, apart from 
um, you probably should start to think about eating more water-rich foods, fruits and vegetables, um, and avoiding man-made stuff, um, that kind of thing. I, I could go on a lot longer about this because I'm fascinated by water anyway. There's a couple of interesting things I just wanted to mention really quickly that water responds to consciousness. Dr. Masaru Emoto did some amazing research on this. It's absolutely fascinating. There's a link below to some videos and other information that I'd recommend if you're interested, go and have a look at them. Uh, and there's also um, something really interesting that, you know, water has memory. Um, so that when you're drinking tap water, especially in a city, it is a closed loop system and that water's been aggressively cleaned. So the wastewater, the flush water and everything like that is aggressively cleaned and pushed back into the system. And I think that's causing massive problems. It's got all the memory, all the violence and everything. It's transported through pipes improperly. And I'm gonna put some links to Dr. Um, not Dr. to Victor Schorberger, who understood more about water, I think, than anybody. Absolutely fascinating guy. If you're into that kind of thing, it's worth having a look at it. Callum Coates did some good videos uh, about Victor Schorberger. Um, and there's also a link to sort of a video that some Russian guys did that's just amazing, absolutely amazing, that talks about water and what happens to it. And those videos completely changed my view on everything.